It's interesting how sometimes certain historical figures outdo any fiction or fantasy. They can be so captivating that they put even our favorite characters in movies and TV shows to shame. Have you ever wondered why there isn't a big epic saga dedicated to some of these incredible people? One of those figures is Olga of Kiev, who was declared a saint by the Orthodox Church in 1547. She was placed at the same level as the Apostles, which is an incredible honor as only five women have ever received it in the entire history of Christianity. Olga's personality was so fascinating that it was a source of inspiration for the character of Cersei Lannister in Game of Thrones. Just like Cersei, Olga became regent for her son after her husband's death and neither of them tolerated any kind of offense. Revenge was their game, and they enjoyed planning elaborate endings for their enemies. Hello everyone, and welcome back. This is Kronos bringing you a story of one of the most powerful women in history. Today, we're talking about Saint Olga of Kiev. But before we get started, please take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Now, let's get into Olga's backstory. It's one of the most intriguing tales from ancient Russia. While her origins remain a bit controversial, the most widely accepted theory is that she was born in Poskov, in northwestern Russia, into a family of Varangian origin. These Varangians are also known as Swedish Vikings, and they were quite a tough bunch. If you're interested in learning more about them, check out our video on the Vikings. Some sources claim that Olga was actually the daughter of Oleg Vesky, the founder of the Kievan Rus, and that she had Bulgarian roots. Regardless of where she came from, we do know that she was born sometime between 890 and 925 and married Prince Igor when she was only 15 years old. Igor's dad was none other than the Prince Rurik of Novgorod, who founded the Rurik dynasty of Russian Tsars. The legend of Olga began when she was 20 years old and her husband Igor went off to collect tributes from the Drevlians, an early Eastern Slavic tribe. Apparently, the Drevlians weren't too happy with Igor's request, so they revolted and killed him. Then, the Drevlians had the audacity to quote-unquote request, more like force Olga to marry their local prince. They sent a gang of 20 matchmakers to get the job done. But Olga, however, had other plans. She killed all the matchmakers and sent an embassy back to the Drevlians to accept their marriage request. But on one condition, that a procession of the wisest men from the Drevlian tribe accompany her to her new home. When the wise men arrived, she locked them up in a bathhouse and set it on fire. No one survived. But Olga wasn't finished just yet. She went to the land of the Drevlians, supposedly to have a funeral feast in memory of her husband. After getting her enemies drunk during the big feast, she ordered her army to kill every last one of them. More than 5,000 people died that day. So, do you think Olga's revenge was now complete? Not quite. She had a few more things in mind. But now, she went into full-on attack mode. So, she laid siege to their capital city, Iskorosten. The city had walls so high and thick that an attack was just not an option. But Olga was patient and she waited until the city was running out of food and supplies. Then, she made a proposal to the besieged. She offered to lift the siege if each household delivered three birds. The Drevlians gladly accepted her offer and happily delivered cages full of birds. At nightfall, Queen Olga ordered her army to attach tar-soaked cloths to the birds' legs and set them on fire before releasing them. Injured and disoriented, the birds flew back to their nests on the city roofs, setting it completely on fire. Meanwhile, her troops were waiting outside the city walls, killing anyone who tried to escape. Only after the city was reduced to ashes did Olga consider her revenge satisfied. The Drevlian people ceased to exist that same century. Despite her brutal tactics, 
Olga was also a very smart and cunning ruler. Her rule over the region lasted for about 15 more years until her son, Vyatoslav, came of age and took over. From that moment on, he took charge of the kingdom's internal politics. Under his leadership, they built a system of tax collection, trade centers, local administrations, and other institutions that were way ahead of their time. In 955, Olga was baptized as a Christian in Constantinople. She then returned to the Kievan Rus, focusing her efforts on building churches and converting her pagan townspeople. These efforts earned her the canonization as Saint Olga of Kiev centuries later. Although Olga was unable to convert her son, she succeeded in doing so with her grandson and protege, Saint Vladimir I, who would declare Christianity as the official religion in the 980s. Despite the cruelty Olga had shown to the Drevlians, she was canonized in 1547 as a reward for her efforts to convert the Kievan Rus into a Christian nation. So what do you think of the saint and ultimate revenge queen? Olga of Kiev could be considered a controversial figure, but there's no denying she made her mark on history. Thanks for tuning in today. If you want to see more great content like this, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, this is Kronos, signing off.